Good morning, good morning, good morning, Chaplain Mac. And I am back yet another Sunday yeah, with a message and a service from the Quarantine Chapel. I am so glad that you have joined us today. And my prayer is that God will richly bless you and anoint you and fill you with the power of his Holy Spirit there. And whatever your request is, I want to encourage you today to make it known unto God. Come before his presence uh, with thanksgiving uh, and into his courts uh, with praise uh, and rejoice uh, in his uh, holy name. Uh, I am playing in the background uh, a classic song. Uh, Give me a double portion uh, and uh, I know that you will enjoy it. <clears throat> And for those of you who don't like to hear me sing during the song, listen to the words and listen to the message. And this indeed will bless you richly. I tell you, it's, it just lifts my spirit to know that we can come before God and God can answer our prayers and meet our need. portion of God's Holy Spirit uh, it is now uh, I would like you to pray with me today father in the name of Jesus we come before your throne of grace dear Lord you have encouraged us to come boldly before the throne of grace uh, and accept mercy and grace to help uh, in our time of need uh, if there is a time that we need to make our request known unto you, Lord, it is now. And if there is a time that we need an answer from you, oh Lord, it is now. We pray, dear Lord, that you may intervene in our affairs, uh, that our world may see that you're not just standing off uh, somewhere just watching things happening, uh, but Lord, that you would intervene and make things happen uh, that can change and transform our lives. Uh, we pray that you may do so even right now, dear Lord, uh, in your holy name. Uh, amen uh, and amen uh, and amen. Uh, as we continue our service today, I want to continue <clears throat> by reading uh, our scripture. <clears throat> our scripture is taken from uh, the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, and I'd like to read uh, from uh, verse 4, Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 4, and hear the word of the Lord, rejoice in the Lord always, I say it again, rejoice, let your gentleness be evident to all, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition or supplication, it says with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the Spirit of God, which transcends all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. The Spirit of God will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. And as the song says, Lord, give me a double portion. So I'm asking today this question, what is your request before God? What is your request? What is it you want God to do for you? How do you want God to intervene in your heart and in your life? How can God make a difference uh, in your life today? Uh, how can his presence uh, turn things around? Uh, because I know uh, that we all uh, are struggling through uh, many different things within uh, our hearts and in our lives. Uh, and because of that struggle that we're going through, uh, we are hoping uh, and praying uh, that God is alert. Uh, remember, the scripture says, uh, God is not slack as some men count slackness but is long-suffering towards us all, which means that he knows uh, what our daily situation is. He knows the pain uh, and the suffering that we're going through. Uh, he knows some of the challenges of life uh, that hits us. There are times uh, that we're not prepared for. He knows that there are times that we are alone uh, and we need uh, a companion uh, and we need a friend. Uh, we know, uh, he knows that there are times we've been uh, disappointed uh, and no one is there to stand with us uh, in the midst of of our disappointment and he wants to change the dynamics in our lives so that he can prove that he is the true and living God. So I'm asking today, what is your request? You know, throughout uh, Christianity, uh, we've always uh, have this tradition uh, of praying for each other. Uh, not only praying for each other, but interceding uh, on behalf of each other and bringing our requests uh, before the throne of grace. Uh, and it was just Thursday night. I was in a prayer time uh, with our coordinators throughout the Caribbean. Uh, and these times uh, are critical within uh, our lives. Uh, these times of prayer are critical uh, in uh, our ministry. Uh, because prayer is uh, the means whereby we can communicate with God. Uh, and whereby God communicates with us uh, and show us uh, his power and his might. Uh, but for most churches, uh, whenever they call a prayer meeting, uh, very few people would show up. Uh, but that has become the foundation of our faith, uh, prayer, because prayer is the power whereby God released himself uh, within our midst. Uh, prayer releases the power and the presence of God within our lives. Uh, and when uh, Philippians says, uh, rejoice in the Lord always, uh, I say again, uh, rejoice. Uh, rejoice uh, in your gentleness or in gladness. Uh, he says, the Lord is near. Do not, he says, be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition or supplication with thanksgiving, present your request before God. Here in the scripture, it tells us that in presenting our requests and our prayers before God, it should eliminate the cause for worry. It should eliminate the reasons why we worry. Because we are now appealing 
to a higher power outside of ourselves. We are appealing to the great I am, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We are appealing to a God who through a tradition of years and thousands and thousands upon years has been with us. And he has demonstrated his presence within our lives from time to time. From the very beginning of Genesis, uh, he tells us how uh, he formed a man in his own image uh, and he maintained uh, a presence uh, in our lives, uh, even in the Garden of Eden. And even though Adam and Eve sinned uh, and God had to turn them out of the garden, yet he still uh, maintained uh, a presence in their life. Uh, so when they needed him, uh, when they wanted wanted to return to him, uh, when they called upon him, uh, when they seek after him, uh, he was there to meet uh, the needs of their heart uh, and the needs of their lives. Uh, and I want to tell you today, uh, whatever you might be going through, uh, I, 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 I really want to emphasize the fact uh, that you can make your request known before God, uh, a request that no one else can understand, a request that no one else uh, can feel. Uh, so many of you are going through uh, some really trying and difficult times. A good family that I knew back in Kentucky have lost uh, their, their son. And now uh, I've just heard uh, I, I'm, I'm another individual uh, that, I, uh, that I'm acquainted with, uh, that I sat down uh, just earlier this year and spoke uh, to that young lady. Uh, sadly to say uh, that the young lady has passed on. Uh, and I can begin to relate to you uh, some of the challenges of illnesses and death and some of the challenges of pain and some of the challenges of financial problems and financial situations that we are confronted with day by day and wonder just how we are going to get through these difficulties. But we're thankful for God's word. Amen. We're thankful for the Bible that encourages us uh, to make uh, our requests known uh, unto God. There is something about coming before the throne of God. Uh, as, if he, uh, as the book of Hebrews tells us, uh, I think it is Hebrews chapter 12 uh, that tells us uh, that, that he that cometh unto God must believe that he is, uh, and he is a rewarder to them who diligently seek him. When we say, make a request uh, be known unto God, uh, I am not just talking just a verbal expression whereby we may mumble something or when we find our set our backs to the wall that we begin to reach out to God. I am not talking about a time of emergency in our lives that 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 just happened and we finally just need to reach out to God. Well, there are those times when it is necessary. Yes, uh, but let me say this. Uh, the Bible encourages us to be fervent. Uh, the Bible encourages us to be consistent uh, because it says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man uh, availed much. Uh, the Lord does not only want to be there for us in times of emergency, but he wants to be there for us continually throughout the expand of our lives. From the beginning of birth and all the way through when he calls us home. Do you hear me today? It's important for us to understand that there is a sense of joy that we should have in coming before the throne of grace because we know who we are coming to, because we know who we are meeting at that throne, because we know the one that can make a difference 
within our hearts and within our lives. We should come with a sense of expectation. That's right. Expecting God to rule on our behalf. Expecting God to speak on our behalf. The Bible tells us that Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. You see, Jesus and the Father is one, and the Father is one with Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is one with Jesus and the Father, and that's why we have the Trinity three in one. There are many dispensations of the Trinity. We have God the Father at the beginning of creation, and then we have God the Son when 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 he was born of a virgin, and he walked upon the face of the earth. He took on humanity, and he took on the form of you and me. Why? So that we can understand that he feels what we feel. He knows the pain that we suffer. He knows about the temptation that we have gone through because Hebrews tells us that he has been there just as we are going through. He has been there because he took on that form of humanity and walked the face of the earth just like we are walking today. Yes, he was hungry and he was thirsty. Yes, he was tired. Yes, he, he also had his share of rebuke, of pain and suffering. He had his share of struggles with the scribes and the Pharisees. Some of you might be having some struggle at work today and you think that you are alone. Well, let me tell you this. Jesus has already been there and he's already done that. So he understands the struggles that you're going through. Some of you may have a struggle with your supervisor or struggle with your boss or struggle with those who are uh, over you uh, and and that lord themselves over you uh, and think uh, that they are i mean the best thing since sliced bread uh, but wait uh, God is in charge. Amen. Uh, some people think that they were so large uh, and uh, nothing could happen to them because they were making these millions of dollars and they have they had these thousands and millions of followers uh, but for some it came crashing down on their head. Uh, with no one uh, to stand with them. But you are not sober because uh, Almighty God has already promised uh, to stand with you. Uh, and as uh, Ephesians says, having done all uh, to stand, uh, stand and gird yourself. Uh, stand because you're not standing alone. Uh, stand uh, because uh, God is in the fight with you no matter what that situation situation is uh, because he says uh, make your request known uh, unto God. Uh, we sang about Elijah and uh, that classic about uh, a double portion uh, where Elijah indeed uh, and Elisha I mean uh, one was following uh, the other that's right uh, Elijah he was the one uh, that God uh, has, was used uh, to 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 proclaim uh, his truth uh, and, and and the truth uh, and the power before kings uh, and queens uh, it was Elijah that that God uh, used uh, in many, many miracles, uh, it was Elijah that God uh, used uh, to turn the hearts and minds of the nation of Israel. Uh, and Elisha was following along uh, with him. Uh, and it came a time, if you read in 2 Kings chapter 2, uh, read chapter 1. Uh, 
where uh, uh, there, there was a king uh, who fell uh, through um, uh, from the top uh, of his house. Uh, I think the Bible call it a latchet. Uh, and uh, because uh, he fell, uh, he thought that he was going to die. And guess who he consulted? He went to Beelzebub and consulted uh, that uh, that, that that false god uh, by the name of uh, an Ekron uh, and uh, because he uh, consulted that false god uh, god and, and he was um his uh, his messenger was stopped uh, by uh, the man of god which is elisha and he asked that question is there not a God in Israel that you could go and consult Beelzebub whether you're going to live or whether you're going to die because of that fall? And I want to ask that question today. Is there not a God in your life that you would go to someone else to seek counsel? Is there not a God in your life uh, who have stood by you to thick and thin? Isn't there a God in your life uh, that has been trying to get your attention time upon time upon time upon time again? Isn't there a God in your life uh, who have loved you uh, and care for you uh, and forgive you uh, and cleanse you uh, and change your life around? Isn't there a God uh, who who you have known or a God that your parents have known or a God that you've experienced before. Well, that God is still alive and well. Do you hear me today? Yeah. He has not gone anywhere. You're the one who have moved. Yes, you not only moved your address, but you've moved your commitment. You've not only moved your commitment, but you've moved your faithfulness. You've not only moved your faithfulness, but you have moved uh, the confidence and the assurance uh, that he gives. Uh. So my question is, uh, why would you need to seek uh, Beelzebub? Uh, why do you need to seek uh, your neighbor's counsel? Uh, why do you need to seek uh, somebody else uh, who does not know anything about your life? Uh, does not know the way you feel and the way you think? Uh, does not know about your future and what may happen to you? Uh, but I'm telling you today, uh, there is a God uh, who knows you from the very birth of your life. There is a God, as Jeremiah says, who knows you and the very number, the very hair on your head is numbered. A very God who knows you from child's birth and a very God who's going to be there when it comes to the end of your life. Who is the best person for us to make a request to? Almighty God. We've been disappointed. In so many people in our lives that we have made requests to. We run short of so many things and we ask, can you help me? We run short of so many things and you've asked, can you give me? We run short of so many things and you ask, can you be there for me? And there are times when we're disappointed. We've asked requests of doctors. We've asked requests of politicians. We've asked requests of so many different figures in our lives. And sad to say, sometimes they have not come through for us. We've asked requests from parents. And sometimes they have not been there for us. But I can tell you this, that when we bring our requests before God. He answers. He knows. He sees our requests. He feels what we feel and understand what we understand. That's why he says, do not be anxious. Do not be worried. Do not be concerned. Do not be consumed by fear. Do not allow these things. He says, but in everything by prayer and supplication or prayer and petition, he says, with thanksgiving, present yourself, present your requests to God. 
when you present your request, you're presenting yourself. Uh, that's right. Uh, you're, you're, you're not just speaking in a voice, uh, but you're speaking with your whole being. Uh, that's right. Uh, God understand that every single emotion that you feel uh, in your body. Uh, he understand uh, that, that pain in your stomach. Uh, he understand that lump in your throat. Uh, he understand the tears that comes from your eyes. Uh, he understands the sleeplessness, uh, the sleepless nights. Uh, yes, he understands. And that's why he's saying, make your request be known before God. You may say, chaplain, that is simple. We know that we can call upon God at any time because he said, call upon me and I will answer thee yeah, and I'll show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. But sad to say, yeah, he has become the last person that we come to when everything else fail, when our backs to the wall is then we come to God. But I want you to change that today yeah, because he is waiting. That's right. He said, in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I, I stand at the door and I knock. He is closer to you than you might think. He is not just a prayer away, but his presence is all around you, being God omnipresent. He knows everything in your life. Did you hear me today? If you would make your request known uh, unto him. Uh, Elisha said to Elijah, I would like a double portion of your blessing. That was his request. And Elijah said to Elisha, you've asked a very difficult thing. But if you see me taken up, if you see me taken up, uh, then uh, you know that your request is granted. It's okay for us to ask difficult things of Almighty God. In fact, uh, the things that are difficult uh, for us on earth uh, is uh, the most easiest thing for God uh, to handle. Do you hear me today? Let me say this again. The things that seems to be more difficult and impossible for us uh, here on earth is the most, uh, it is the simplest thing for God to handle. You know why? Because uh, he has already handled your situation before. He knows, uh, I mean, uh, he knows all that you need. Uh, that's right. Uh, and that's the reason why he says, uh, make your request known uh, unto God uh, with thanksgiving. Uh, and he says, uh, and present yourself to him. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Uh, which means that uh, the Lord would relieve you of your worry. Uh, the Lord would relieve you of your anxiety. Uh, the Lord would relieve you of your pain. Uh, the Lord uh, would keep your mind focused on him. Uh, he would keep you. Uh, focus uh, where your attention needs to be uh, and not on your problem and not on your worry and not on your pain and not on your suffering. Uh, as Psalms 121 says, uh, I would lift up mine eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help what? Cometh from the Lord, uh, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Hallelujah. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he said, he that keepeth Israel, he shall neither slumber nor sleep. He said, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. He said, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. And the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So when uh, Elijah asked Elisha for a double portion, the Bible tells us 
when he saw him disappear, he still was not sure that he had gotten it. Hallelujah. And I, 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 and I want to do something here, here today, yeah, because uh, he, the, the Bible tells us uh, that, 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 that when uh, he, he, he uh, asked for that uh, and he was not sure what was going to happen, uh, the Bible tells us uh, that uh, Elijah took that same uh, coat, uh, he took that same uh, Oh, jacket, as we would say, yeah. He took that same coat that, that, that he was wearing, uh, that cloak that he was wearing, uh, and uh, he took that cloak uh, and uh, he used it uh, and uh, he, 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 he folded uh, and then he parted, uh, he, he striked the water where he was going to cross, uh, just like Elijah did. Uh, he struck the water and when he struck the water where he was going to cross over it parted hallelujah it parted uh, and he walked over on uh, dry land uh, and that's how he knew uh, that he had received uh, a double portion uh, from almighty god uh, hallelujah i'm saying today uh, god is still uh, handing out a double portion uh, i know that when you eat uh, food and it's good uh, you go back for seconds uh, when you eat uh, food uh, that 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 is filling uh, you go back for seconds uh, but i'm not talking about physical food uh, i'm talking about uh, spiritual food uh, i'm talking about the spiritual anointing uh, i'm talking about the power of god uh, that's coming upon you uh, next sunday uh, in, in the life of the church is considered pentecostal sunday uh, and we're going to talk more about that uh, that's the reason why i'm saying today uh, make your request known unto god uh, elijah uh, he he asked for a double portion uh, and God granted him uh, that double portion uh, and from there on uh, we begin to hear of Elisha uh, Elisha with an S-A uh, do you hear me today uh, and the miracles that the Lord uh, has worked through him uh, the double portion was evident uh, on his life uh, and the Lord wants to make a double portion evident on your life just the same uh, there is another man that made his request known unto God, and that was Solomon. When Solomon built the temple to Almighty God, and he was dedicating the temple to God, God asked him, name anything that you want, and I will give it to you. And here's what Solomon said to Almighty God. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil for who is able to govern this great people. You know, I wish our politicians would pray a prayer like this. Lord, give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people. I wish. Uh, oh hallelujah. Not just politicians. But I wish sometimes your friends. And your neighbor. And sometimes your family member. Would have an understanding heart. I know that you believe uh, in your life. That you've been the most misunderstood person. Uh, in all creation now. Uh. People take your words and twist it. People do not communicate your intention. People say things that you did not say. People, I mean, we can go on and on and on. How people have made you such a misunderstanding person. And because of that, you have suffered greatly because they misrepresented you. Because you were misunderstood. But but here is what the Lord wants to do for you. Uh, he wants to give you an understanding heart uh, that you may understand uh, the height uh, and the depth of the Lord, uh, his love and his grace. Uh, he wants to give you an understanding heart uh, that you may know him uh, whom to know is life eternal. Uh, he wants to give you an understanding
understanding heart of compassion, uh, an understanding heart of love, uh, an understanding heart of faith, uh, an understanding heart of praise. Uh, yes, uh, if you reach to God and say, Lord, give me an understanding heart, uh, whatever else that you might seek after, it will come to you. Because God said to Solomon, because you did not ask for riches, because he did not ask uh, for, Lord, let me win the lottery. Because he did not ask, uh, Lord, uh, let me get that high paying job. Uh, because he did not ask, all you wanted to do was to serve. He says, because all you ask is for wisdom and understanding, everything else uh, would be given to you. And we know today that Solomon has been one of the wisest men in our world and the literature before us in the Bible has shown us his wisdom and his understanding. What's your request before God? What it is that you want him to do for you that you cannot do for yourself? What it is that how can he break? How can he break the yoke? How can he meet your need? I want to pray for this young lady who have just lost a young daughter. I want to pray for my friend who have just lost a young son. I want to pray for this young lady that says that she's dying from stage four cancer and her son is also having some challenges and difficulties in his life. And she asked, could you pray for me? And I know that there are other needs out there. But I know whatever we, we ask of God, he can meet our need. Someone is saying, Lord, I need a financial blessing. A friend of mine from Trinidad says, you know, I'm uh, praying that the Lord would bless me financially. Yeah. And another friend from Zimbabwe needs uh, a financial blessing. Whatever your need might be, yeah, God uh, wants to intervene. Whatever it is, God wants to show you uh, that he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all which you ever ask or think. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Elijah asked for a double portion. Those that are hearing this message today, they have their own personal request uh, that they're bringing before your throne of God. Uh, and you said, he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. Uh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, give them the assurance, dear Lord, uh, that you may meet uh, the need of their hearts and the need of their lives. That you can change things in a way that they've never imagined. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, give them hope in a hopeless situation. Grant power. Lord, I want to pray for that young lady, uh, for that grandmother. Because of her granddaughter. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we know you can make a difference. As we bring our request before you. The church in Dominica that needs a pastor. We want to pray for the Caribbean field. <coughs> As we reach out throughout the islands of the Caribbean to take the message of salvation, dear Lord. I pray that you may make a way where there seems to be no way. Help us to reach those uh, that are in need, uh, that they can hear the message of salvation and surrender their lives to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You said, make your request known. Uh, and Lord, that's our prayer today. That you can make a difference in our hearts and in our lives. This we pray, dear Lord, in your holy name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. May God bless you today.